G'day folks, welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers update here on how our weather centre is going today the 6th of October. After what has been a bit of a crazy week across most of Australia weather-wise, this next week looks like it's going to be a very tame one, which is going to allow us to work fairly heavily on our weather centre to hopefully bring it to you within the next couple of weeks. Alright, a few big changes I'd like to talk about in the last seven days or so. So on the back part of the site, we have now started to add all of the different parameters from the computer models, and we now have an ability to move the slider to link the, the model parameters. And so here's an example here of tropical cyclone shear magnitude, which shows us how much wind shear there is in the atmosphere. And not only that, but we can get it to now play and loop through uh, the forecast period. So you can see here the loop of the uh, shear potential in the atmosphere. So you can see very clearly that right now, if a cyclone was to try and form, say, near Queensland, it would die very quickly. However, if it was to form, say, closer to the Northern Territory, there is a chance there that there's enough uh, or a lack of wind shear that will allow the system to uh, develop. But obviously, we're not looking at that at the moment. What we're looking at is just to make sure all of our systems work. And so this is just one of a number of parameters. So we will have the GFS and the Access R model here. This is the Access R model. It's a lot higher resolution. And you can see the sort of data that the frames is much, much tighter uh, in terms of the ISO lines and a lot more detail coming from the Access R modeling. On top of that, we'll be offering the Access G model, which is the global version of this. So the Access model is the Bureau of Meteorology model, uh, and we'll be giving you a, a different look at, at both of those. Uh, so we're going to have things alike. So let's go through some of the parameters we're going to have. Lifted index shows us how unstable the atmosphere. CAPE shows us how much energy is available in the atmosphere. Severe weather shows us what the potential is for severe weather. And I'll explain all these in a video uh, to our subscribers as to how we can work these together and how they operate. K index shows us what the chances are for storms. Total totals, how strong will those storms possibly be? How widespread will they be? Uh, the temperature shows us what temperature we're expecting at the surface or two metres above the surface. Uh, we can look at a wind shear just above the surface. We can look at storm probability maps, uh, particularly from GFS at the moment. So you can see here where storms are likely to form and you can see through the loop where they're expected to move, how they're expected to move. Uh, it's going to to really be a fascinating look and you can see as we go through to mid to late next week you can see the whole of Queensland's east coast here is a chance at seeing storms and that's uh, some of the key things that we'll be able to look at just by viewing these models on top of radar satellite data anyway let's continue on we can look here at how much rain is expected to have fallen in the three hours preceding the timestamp. you can look at how much rain over 24 hour periods we're expecting you can see what the winds are doing at the surface about a kilometer and a half above about three kilometers above five kilometers above seven or eight kilometers above nine or ten kilometers above the atmosphere uh, the earth's surface We've had a look at tropical cyclone shear magnitude. Uh, we can have a look at the surface temperatures. So that includes the ocean sea surface temperatures, uh, temperature at 850 and temperature at 500. So we can see where we've got little cool pockets of upper level air and where those little cool pockets are, we can see enhanced areas of thunderstorms developing uh, inside those cool pockets. So they, these are sort of fascinating things that we'll be able to have a look at. You can't get these anywhere else uh, in terms of such, such, ac such, uh, comprehensive look at all of these computer models it's fantastic it'll be out very shortly a couple of weeks in fact uh, we've also got here dew point at the surface so that means how moist it is at the surface very important we've also got here a really important measure for tropical cyclone and tropical thunderstorm activity this is the amount of moisture or the depth of moisture in the atmosphere and we're looking here for reds reds and purples if we get those sort of uh, those sort of values we have huge amounts of moisture uh, if we're obviously looking at maybe a cyclone development Developing up here in the southeast Indian Ocean and there's 20% moisture in through a depth of the atmosphere we know that's not going to happen and we can know that just from this one chart this entire one chart will show us straight away whether a cyclone is a chance or not it's pretty powerful stuff 
and it's going to be available to our subscribers, as I say, a couple of weeks' time. So that gives us an Australian overview, but we can also go straight into the Coral Sea if we need to. We can go into the Northern Territory. We can go right into uh, 64 kilometres here, and I'll give uh, Mackay as an example. Let me just find Mackay here from your drop-down menu. We can go right in at 64 kilometre, uh, 64 kilometre range and have a look and find out individual spots near Mackay that could be particular storm chances or particular chances for heaviest rainfall. All of that amazing data we can basically we can just move right into suburb by suburb and have a look at uh, obviously limited by the resolution of the computer model data which currently is around that 10 to 12 kilometer mark but that is sensational detail that we can r move right into and show you the loop duration to 12 hours so we can have a look at 12 hours worth of radar and satellite and we can animate that through on top of that as well we can also use this uh, slider here so if we want to pause the animation and move through imagery in particular we can use this slider which will allow us to do that over 12 hours Alrighty, so that's what we've done. What are we working on? Well, the next stage that we're working on at the moment is uh, trying to just tidy this little area up here to make it a little bit easier for you to find what you need to find. So we might be changing a few things to radio boxes, check boxes, all sorts of different types of things which will allow you to be able to find what you need to find a little bit uh, easier. Now, one of the key things, of course, so much data, so much model opportunities here to, to analyse and to forecast and all sorts of things that will be available at your fingertips but we need to try and make it as easy to find what you need to find uh, as quickly as possible and on top of that don't forget this is only the first phase that we're releasing in a couple of weeks time on top of that we're going to the look at phase two we're going to start adding forecasts and observations so things where we might be able to click a map so click any of these locations and up will come a forecast for those locations up will come observations for those locations so all of that stuff can be overlaid on top of models radars satellite it's going to be a i mean it is a massive project we're well and truly on the pro on the path now uh, and then following on from that we're looking at adding wind data as well so velocity radar data on top of that so that means we can find out how strong the winds are once again it'll be high resolution stuff much higher than publicly available so you'll be uh, pretty amazed at what will what this will become uh, by the end of the or by around mid wet season when this is all complete but the first phase of this the computer model data or this all the satellite radar animation stuff is going to be available within the next couple of weeks we are extremely excited and it'll be just in time because it looks like towards the back end of october uh, the weather might just start getting interesting again. We're in for a pretty dull week though, and that means that we can work fairly heavily on this particular project over the next week. If that sort of depth of information and analysis is something that you reckon you could definitely use, please help us out, become a subscriber. That helps us document tropical cyclones, and in return, we'll try and make sure that you get access to one of Australia's best weather information and forecasting services. So to become a subscriber, ozcyclonechasers.com.au, subscribe to OCC, and in a couple of weeks, all of that stuff will be at your fingertips. Don't forget too, if you go to uh, your particular weather page or your particular state's weather page, you've got some model data there already. You've also got uh, rainfall, da uh, rainfall charts from the Bureau, and you've also got rainfall tables so that we will be adding to very shortly as well with some more locations. And on top of that, we've also got a blog here, and on the on that blog, almost every day of the wet season and the build-up season, there will be specific state weather video updates for Queensland, Northern Territory, and WA all through the wet season. Unless, of course, we're chasing, in which case our primary role is to not die and take data from inside a cyclone, uh, in which case we won't be able to issue those. But any other day, uh, there'll be updates there for those particular states. As you can tell, I'm excited. Not long to go now before we can make all this stuff public. Thanks for watching this update, folks. I'll talk to you again next Wednesday night.